Hello, welcome to the Anesthesia Clinics part of EduSearch. Uh, today's topic is Medazolam. It's a part of the intravenous induction agents part four. It's a benzodiazepine, has a benzene ring and seven member diazepine ring. Um, substitutions and alterations in these rings affect potency and biotransformation. <clears throat> Imidazole ring uh, leads to water solubility at a lower pH. Diazepam and lorazepam are insoluble in water. So parenteral preparations contain proper, uh, propylene glycol, which can produce venous irritation. It's, it's not used um, that commonly anymore. Okay. Midazolam, mechanism of action, same receptors as barbiturates, but to a different site. Uh, GABA-A receptor increases the frequency of openings of the associated chloride ion channel. Uh, flumazenil, um, which is an uh, imid uh, imidazole uh, benzodiazepine, is a specific benzodiazepine receptor antagonist that uh, effectively reverses most of the uh, CNS effects of benzodiazepine. So if you ever accidentally overdose or if somebody has given too much of uh, it in the ICU, uh, this is the drug which has to be used to reverse it. Okay, It's an antagonist. So what are the uh, pharmacokinetics? Uh, the absorption, uh, well, if you're given it orally, it's absorbed completely. Peak plasma concentration is achieved in 30 to 80 minutes. Uh, bioavailability of the oral route is 44% and by intramuscular is 80 to 100%. Okay, So uh, there are various uh, doses depending on uh, what is your indication of giving the drug. Okay, So the, of course, uh, most commonly we are using is midazolam. For induction, you use 0.05 to 0.15 milligram per kilogram. If you are going to use it for maintenance, suppose you're going to put it in an infusion or you want to give intermittent boluses, you can give 0 0.05 milligram per kilogram or one microgram per kilogram per minute. Uh, for uh, sedation, again, you can use for 0.5 to 1 milligram in repeated doses or intramuscularly 0 0.07 milligram per kilogram intramuscularly. Uh, distribution, uh, the drug is 96% protein in the, the plasma. The volume of distribution is 0.8 to 1.5 liters per kilogram. Uh, volume of distribution may increase to 3.1 in the critically ill. It is uh, completely metabolized in the liver to hydroxylated derivatives, which are then conjugated to a glucuronide. Metabolites bind to CNS benzodiazepine receptors and are pharmacologically active. Uh, excretion, uh, it is primarily in the urine as the hydroxylated derivatives. Uh, renal impairment does has little effect. So it is a safer drug uh, to be used in, uh, you know, patients with kidney diseases or uh, with known case of CKD. Okay, if you want to give sedation, of course, in within the uh, limited doses and using your ideal body weight, you can definitely use this drug. Clearance is 5.8 to 9 ml per minute per kilogram. Elimination half-life is 1.5 to 3.5 hours. Elimination half-life may increase in the critically ill. Uh, coming to the pharmacodynamics of the drug, uh, cardiovascular effects uh, in induction doses um, causes fall in blood pressure due to fall in systemic vascular resistance. Heart rate, cardiac output are well-preserved. Okay, it's a relatively stable hemodynamics due to slower onset of action. Of course, if you give very high doses, it's, it, it is, or uh, giving it with an opioid, you may get hemodynamic changes. Midazolam uh, primarily is not given as a sole agent. Uh, it is always uh, like when we use it as an induction agent, okay, it is usually used in uh, patients who are cardiac, uh, cardiac, you know, instabil instability. Uh, or you are doing an induction of a patient with a known cardiac uh, disease. Uh, it is used in a combination of midazolam with an opioid, most commonly used is uh, fentanyl. Uh, so uh, as a consequence, the doses of both kind of limit and you avoid uh, the side effects. They work uh, very beautifully synergistically and they are extremely cardiostable. So you will not get, and um, if if given, uh, you know, you use, of course, a little higher doses for induction and um, uh, your requirement of, you know, inotropic supports, which are very common if you're using propofol and, you know, thiopentone uh, and ketamine again will have certain harmful effects on the heart. So this combination is actually very good uh, if you are worried about any uh, patients with a cardiac risk. Uh, respiratory effects, dose-related transient respiratory depression, okay. Um, but of course, as I said, if you for, give within the dose or if you give it in a titrated way, it, it can be still very, very safe. 
uh, respiratory depression of course is more and will cause also may lead to certain amount of confusion uh, more in the elderly patients and of course in patients who have pre-existing lung diseases apnea can be given if you give very high doses again in combination with an opioid because they are as i said synergistic response to hypercarbia is transiently depressed but it is not so significant uh, cerebral effects uh, have anticonvulsant properties, hypnotic, anxiolytic, sedative action on CNS. Okay, the anticonvulsant uh, part is 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 very good. It can be used as a uh, first line treatment and as an anticonvulsant, especially in OT because midazolam is so easily available in the operating room. Uh, analgesia, no analgesic effect, produces anterograde amnesia. Okay, decrease in cerebral blood flow and central metabolic rate of oxygen. Uh, the threshold is raised. Uh, can be used as a treatment of seizure disorders due to alcohol withdrawal, local anesthetic toxicity, and in epilepsy, uh, possesses centrally acting, um, you know, muscle relaxant action. Uses uh, and the indications can be used as a preoperative medication. Uh, IV sedation and amnesia, uh, where you're giving, you know, regional anesthesia, like you have given patients spinal epidural or a block. Uh, you can use it um, post-procedural or sometimes in very anxious patient, you can give sedation before doing the procedure because it's like a needling and some patients are very uh, anxious about it. Also, you'll probably get more cooperation after giving sedation. Uh, while uh, doing procedures in endoscopy, bronchoscopy, um, in ICU, post-operatively, if some patients are getting uh, very agitated or, you know, you can use it uh, even in small kids, you know, sometimes they try to pull out drains and uh, the, the IV lines and it is unsafe for them. So you can give minimum amount of uh, sedation even post-operatively. Induction of general anesthesia, mostly used with as a co-induction where two or more inducing agents are combined to produce anesthesia. Uh, may be used also as a nausea and vomiting <clears throat> prophylaxis. Uh, complications may lead to respiratory depression, of, again in very high doses, undesirable degree of prolonged interval of post-operative amnesia and sedation. Uh, sometimes leads to confusion, especially in the elderly population. Okay, They forget where they are, what is happening. They forget they had a surgery. So uh, that is why you have to use very cautiously in such patients, patients who have known history of any delirium or dementia. Um, if, if it gets out of hand, you can always uh, reverse it with flumazenil. So make sure that it is available in your institute. Uh, erythromycin uh, inhibits metabolism of uh, midazolam and causes a two to threefold prolongation and intensification of its effects. Um, midazolam reduces the minimum alveolar concentration of volatile anesthetics as much as 30%. So if you're using pre uh, midazolam as a pa part of your balanced anesthesia technique, uh, your requirement of uh, your volatile anesthetics can go down because the, the primary use of volatile anesthetics for maintenance is also amnesia. Uh, contraindicated in first trimester of pregnancy, birth defects may occur. You may get cleft flipped and uh, cleft palate. Thank you very much.